Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Clarity Soft webinar. Today is Tuesday, September 17th, 2019, and our topic for today is Intro to the Projects Module. I'm Susan Arnold, Clarity Soft Implementation Specialist, and we're going to learn everything there is to know about the Projects Module today. The Projects Module is an add on module in the system, so you may or may not have it. Um, if you don't have it, then you can speak with your account rep to uh, find out about getting it turned on in your system. But what its purpose is, is to allow you to extend past a sale. Um, in many of the businesses that we work with, you go through your opportunity, you win your sale, but then there's follow-up afterwards, maybe by you, maybe by a different team of people, where you need to do some setup, you need to do some implementation. Um, if you're in the construction business, you actually need to do the work that you've said that you are contracted to do and you want to track the steps of that project. So we designed the project module to give you that ability to take that completed opportunity or sale, convert it to a project, and then have project stages that you go through to help you monitor to complete that project until it is done. And then the entire sale is completed and everything is finished for it. So that's what we'll be talking about today, um, is learning how to set up the projects module and then walk through the steps involved in working in the project. So with that, um, you know, the projects module, as I said, can be used for really any type of business where you're going beyond your sale and you want to track that. So it can be construction type projects. It might be for product development and testing. It might be for um, software installation and implementation like we do here at ClaritySoft. It might be for hardware installation and testing. Again, whatever fits your business, you can manage it. Um, there are also two types of projects that you can create in ClaritySoft. One is called a customer project and the other one is an internal project. So the customer project would be one associated with a customer or client that you're working with. And the second category would be for an internal project that you might be working on inside your business. So you can use ClaritySoft to monitor that internal project. Maybe you're doing some reorganization or some other type of internal type of project that you can monitor as well. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll be looking at are the customization settings in projects. There are some customization settings that you are able to set up where you create different project types. And with each type that you create, you can create stages. So you can have multiple types. And then for each type, you have different stages. Um, then we'll go to the process of taking a, an opportunity record. You can also convert from an quote or a sale, but converting an opportunity to create a, pro a project record and then monitoring that project through the different activities that you set. So we'll walk through all the steps and hopefully you'll be comfortable with it. So two things would have to be true. You have to have the projects module turned on in your database. And secondly, you would need to be an admin user in your database so that you can do the customization and setup. All right. So I'm in ClaritySoft and I've done a little bit of preparation ahead of time here where I have a company here and I have an opportunity for them that um, is mostly ready, okay? So we'll just take a quick look at the opportunity record. So as you know, if you're working with ClaritySoft right now, you have your opportunities, and in your opportunities, you go through your various sales stages 
until you win it. So once you win an opportunity, that would be when it might be triggered to be converted to a project. You could even create a sales stage called convert to project. And then once it reaches that stage, someone could receive an email um, and be alerted that that opportunity is ready to be converted to a project and then can do it or the sales rep can do it. So that's a process you would need to decide upon. And like I said, you could convert it from an opportunity or if you use quotes and sales and you wanna convert it when the sale is completed, then you would convert it from the sale record. If you use quotes but not sales, then you could convert it from the quotation record or the opportunity record. That would be decided upon by you and your team according to the process that you're following in Clarity Soft. So I have my opportunity. Um, I have my products and services here. These will transfer over to the project when you convert the project so that you can see what the person purchased and know what needs to be installed or whatever needs to be done. Um, so you have that information in the project, all right? So what I wanna do first here is, um, and then, oh, I wanna look here. I have some custom fields here in my opportunity record. I have industry type, which I haven't checked. So let's see, I would think these are probably food and beverage. And I have a territory and I have a product interest and then I have a product level. So these are some custom fields that I have here. And these custom fields I may want to also include in my project module in the custom fields because then when I convert the record, any data in these custom fields will transfer into the project record. So those again are design things you wanna think about ahead of time. What are fields, you know, first of all, where are we converting from? Second of all, if we're converting from opportunities, what custom fields do we have in opportunities that we also want in projects? If you're converting from quotes, then you wanna put those custom fields in quotes that may come from opportunities to be converted to a quote and then converted to a project. So that's the flow that you need to decide upon. So I have some, I just want you to pay attention to those right now and then we'll come back to it. So when I'm first setting up my projects, I want to go to settings. And under settings, go to customization. And under here, you will see the projects module. And then for the projects module, you have custom fields, you have preferences, and you have project types. So you'll wanna think about your custom fields. Notice I already have the product level territory and industry type here. I've also added another custom field called the number of users that will be added um, when I open my project record. So I have done some of this set up ahead of time. And then I have preferences where this is the same as with opportunities and quotes and sales, you are able to decide upon a numbering setup so that you can customize it a bit. If you go with the default one in Clarity Soft, it's gonna put a prefix of P for project. It's going to put five leading zeros and start with the number one. If you wanna customize this, then you can add, you know, you can change your prefix on a node, a PR, and you could start with six leading zeros, whatever. Again, part of that would depend on how many projects you think you're gonna track over time and then start with a particular number. So maybe I wanna start with 25, okay? So that you set your preferences there for your numbering and then click apply to save it. And then you're gonna come over here and look at project types. 
you can have multiple project types, okay? So if you're doing different types of things, then you can configure that type and have different sales stages, or not sales stages, project stages. So I'm gonna start a new one here. I'm going to add, and the first thing you do is give it a name. So I'm gonna call this I'm just going to call this new onboarding so that it's different. Well, different than the one I already have. And then this is where you assign the category. Is this an internal project or is it one related to a customer? Um, if you select internal because it is going to be an internal project, one of the differences will be when you create the project record, it will not connect to any account or contact in the database because it's internal, all right? When you create a customer one, then it will need to connect to an account and a contact just like all the other records do in Clarity Soft. So that would be a difference. Now, when a project is created from a conversion, it can be automatically assigned to a specific person. If you have one user who is the overall manager of projects, then you could assign it to that person. So I'm gonna pick myself here. And then the other thing that you can do is you can have the project when you create it, automatically start an action plan. So action plans go along with projects um, and they are a bundle of activities that you put together to say, okay, the first activity we need to do is um, schedule an initial meeting. The second activity we need to do is create certain types of documents. The third activity we need to do depending on what you're doing, might be to gather certain materials together or order materials, whatever. So you decide on the activities and you create an action plan. Now, the action plan technically should be created before you do this, but I'm gonna create the project first and then we'll come back and put the action plan in here. You are not um, required to have an action plan. You can apply one after you've created the project record. But this allows you that if, you know, the project's always going to be the same set of activities to just have them automatically applied to make it easier for the person who's monitoring that project. But we're going to wait a little bit. I have some action plans here, but we're going to wait because I want to show you how to create one. Um, and then this allows you to prompt to start the action plan so that when you create the new project, it will come up and say, do you want to start the action plan? And then you, you know, so it prompts you and you can choose yes or no at that point in time. Enabled means that the project type is active, an active project type that you're using, all right? And then we come down here to project stages. And the project stages are the steps that you're going to go through or the stages. So much like your opportunity sales stages, you decide upon those. So I'm gonna click the add button and you're going to name a stage. Again, it can be enabled or disabled and for the status, it's either active or inactive. So Similar to your opportunity sales stages, all your stages are in categories of forecast, one lost, or no decision. These are active or inactive. So all your stages until you get to the final one or you're completed are going to be active. So you just simply do that and then you add. So let's see here. I'm doing a very simple setup of what we do in implementation here at Clarity Soft. Oh, I bet I can't do that. Let's 
So you just add them. So now this final step here may, as soon as you set that step, then that means the project is completed, okay? And so that would be, goes the project goes inactive. And again, you can have as many stages as you need for your project type. And then the one thing to do is remember to scroll down here and click save at the very bottom. So I now have my new onboarding project type, okay? And so I've set that up. And if I wanna add any custom fields, then I can go here and add a new custom field. So the one custom field that I do wanna add here is database name. And again, you may have a lot of different custom fields you need to add, the things that you're trying to track in there. You might have um, check boxes for different types of documents you need to gather or permits you might need to get or things like that or drop down lists with those kinds of things. So again, you'll think through what are the things I need to monitor while I'm in a project and going through a project. So that again, for searching purposes, you can find where you are with things, you know where you are um, in that project. Okay, so I've added that. And then remember, whenever you add a custom field, you need to go to your user interface template and put the custom field. Now notice we have two of them, one for the customer category and one for the internal. So you wanna go to the customer one. And then depending on what access profiles you've used in the database, if you've only used the all profile, you could go directly there. If you have used additional profiles, then you'd want to go to your base template and put in the information. So here's my database name, which uh, I'll put it up here. And then industry type I don't have in here. So let me pull that over. Let's see. Maybe that goes there. Um, push this up here. So you do your layout the way you want it to be, and then save it. Um, let's see, let's bring project number over. Um, save it. And then because this is the master template, we need to copy it to the other templates that we wanna copy it to, the profiles. So, Technically what I do, I just do check all and then it copies it to everything unless you have very specific custom access profiles where you don't want all of those fields everywhere. So just go with what you know you have in your database. So I've done the project type and set up the stages. I've added a custom field and I've applied the custom field to the user interface template. So after that, I need to log out and then log back in. And now I'm ready. Um, to, I suppose, next thing, well, let's do a project first. Let's look at a project, then we'll worry about the action plan. We'll come back to that. So I have in here an account, Brambleberry Tea Company, 
And as I said, I was in the opportunities. So I have this opportunity and it has now been one. So I would come in here or the sales rep and mark this as being one, okay? And just check that everything is filled in so that it's all good to go. The products and services are all correct. And then I can do this one of two ways. I can save this, which will leave the record open. And then I can convert it from here. Um, if you're starting in the opportunities module, sometimes this is the easiest way to do it because if you do a save and close, you go back out to a long list of opportunities and you may have to search for it to pull it up. This way, you've saved the information, you leave the record open, and then you can come right up here to this vertical ellipsis button and you can see that you can do your conversions to wherever you want it to go amongst convert to project. So I can convert it to a project. You get the same steps that you get when you're converting to a quote or a sale. Um, and then I'm finished and then I can do a save and close. Now, when I'm back out here, I can go to my projects tab, but I don't see a projects tab or no. So this is my next step perhaps is I need to come, I'm in accounts and I need to go to the vertical ellipsis button in the list view and go to comp, whoops, wrong thing, tab settings. And I see over here on the left projects. So I want to bring it over to the right and drop it wherever I want to see it. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, sometimes you might get a message saying you have too many tabs over here. So you would need to decide, like if I drag, see, I can't add anymore. So you might have to decide which ones you need to see here. Depends on how many modules you have in your database. So I'm going to apply this. And then when I click this expand button again, I see projects. So that's one thing you don't have to do a log out and log back in. Um, it's like setting the columns. So I can go to projects now and I have my Brambleberry Tea Company project. Okay. And so then I can open it. Now what you want to notice here Here's my number, okay? So I changed it to be a PR000 and start with 25. So it started with 26. Um, and the project name is actually the opportunity name. So whatever um, is in your opportunity name field will automatically go into the project name field when you convert it. If you convert the opportunity to a quotation, the opportunity name goes into the description field in the quotation record. And then that is what would go into the project name if you convert the quote. So that's the thread that goes through. All right. So we have that. Our project type is new onboarding. You can choose which project type you want. Okay. So you have a drop down list of your different project types. Then the category is customer and notice that is grayed out because these are all customer category project types. And then my project stage starts at initial meeting. So I have my stages here. And then it's a son associated with the Brambleberry Tea Company and Aliyah Bobbitts, okay? And that's because that was what was with the um, opportunity record. So that's there. And then the owner can be me. Probably the opportunity was owned by Bill Miller. I wasn't paying attention. All right. And assigned to, notice it was automatically assigned to me. Okay. So the owner could be Bill Miller, who is the sales rep who originally created the opportunity. 
and the assigned to is what I defined in the project type setup that I am the project manager here, okay? And then here's my database name field and my number of users. This is the start date of the project and then you can set a due date when you're supposed to get it done. So depending on the length of time, you know, it could be several months. We'll see if we can maybe get this done by November the, well, let's make it the 26th, okay? This can be changed. This is similar to your close date in your opportunities where you can change the close date. The start date um, can also be changed. Maybe this came in today, but you're not actually going to start it until October the 1st because of you know, whatever you have to do to prepare for it. So this can be changed as well. So it could be the day that you're creating the record. It could be any day that you wanna start. And my industry type, territory, and product level all came across from my opportunity record. That's why it's important to make sure those are filled out in the opportunity record, okay? And then address information comes across. And the value of the project here is what is under the products and services here. So this comes across from your opportunity um, record or your quote or your sale, okay? All right, so we have all our information here. And then this looks very similar to um, all the other records in ClaritySoft where you have your different tabs here with information. And up here you have your activity buttons to send an email, create activities and things like that. So all very much the same. Now the other thing that's in the project record is a team tab where you can assign a team of people to that project because maybe there'll be some people that are from your company and some people from Brambleberry Tea that you're working with. So first of all, you select the type. Is it an internal person or an external person? So if you select internal, then you can put, when you click in the name, you can select what person internally is going to be on it. And then you can assign them what they're supposed to do, okay? Um, and share the project, I have to say, I forget what that means. So we won't check it. I'll have to find that one out. And then if I add somebody who's external, then I'm gonna get a list of all of the contacts in ClaritySoft. And if Alaya is one of the people, then I can add him and what he is. And let's just say he's company leader. So again, you can add as many people as you need to the team and you can work with that. So you know who your team leaders are and the team people. Then once you've got that, Activities are the things that you start doing. And if you remember, we did not add the action plan. So the action plan did not automatically drop into here when we created the new project. So what we wanna do now, I'm gonna do a save and close. I wanna go back to settings and I want to set up an action plan if you haven't done that. So under settings, you see action plans. And action plans can be created for um, any kind of use in the database. They can be applied to a lead, to a contact, to an opportunity, and to a project. So you can see here, here's a new lead action plan that has a set of activities, what to do when you get a new lead, okay? And so that can be applied there. Um, here's an onboarding action plan. I'm gonna look at this one just to show you what we're 
what's a sample. But what you do is you give it a name and you want to make the name understandable as to what module it should go with. So like new lead, opportunity, something like that, um, new customer, so that you know where it's supposed to go because all the people can see these. And then um, you can choose here, do you exclude weekends when you're counting? And so you can either check that or not check that, and then it's enabled. Then you begin to add your activities. So the subject is here, and the type of activity is to send an email. It's assigned to a specific person, or it can be assigned to whomever is the record owner, and I'll show you this in a minute. And then the key to the action plan is setting a start, how many days out to start, and how many days out is it actually due or should be done. And this is how you can sequence these so that you can set up an action plan. This is going out 36 days. Um, so this is the first day, within one day, within five, these things should start. And then they're due, you usually give yourself a few days to get them done, all right? You also can set a reminder. So if I open this, I have the subject line, what type of activity, so these will be in your activity types, which you might decide you need more. And then you can set a priority for it. And then here where you're assigning it, you can assign it to any user in the system or to make it go with whatever person is assigned to the record, to the project, you can choose record owner, okay? And then you choose how many days out to start it when it's due, if you want a reminder, and when do you want the reminder sent? This would be an email reminder. And so you can either say at what time on the due date or on the start date. Probably the start date to me makes more sense. And then this is an option here. This is that category option in activities that you can pick from. And then these are two custom ones, so you probably won't see these or you definitely won't see these, okay? So that's what you do. Um, I changed the record owner, so that's fine. Um, so that's how you can set your action plan up. So if I now go to a new action plan, so you can actually see how to make it or create it. So I can give it a name. Let's just call it on onboarding to and then I would put a description in here I can exclude weekends and then you can see now just click add activity and then I say And you can choose whether you're going to call the person or email the person. Maybe you decide it's easier to call them. And then you can assign it to the record owner or you can assign it to a specific person. So for the state, the activities, if some people are supposed to do one set of activities and other people are supposed to do other activities, always, 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 then assign the owner here. If it goes with whomever is the owner of the record, then you'd wanna choose record owner, okay? So whatever works there, and then you say, well, I want this to start within one day of the project being created, and I want it to be completed or due within three, okay? And then, I don't need to do these two things. If I want this category, this is optional. And if I want a reminder, I can click here, but I don't really want one. And then I save it. And so I continue to add all my activities. Now, another option here, in certain situations, you might have 10 or 15 activities that you need to do, but they don't 
necessarily always go in a perfect sequential order. They just need to get done. So instead of putting a start and a due date, leave this at zero. Then what will happen is whatever order you have typed your activities in, they will stay in that order and they will just drop in. And then, for example, you might get scheduled a kickoff meeting done and three other steps done on the same day, even though they're not supposed to be done until you know, the next week or something. You might get them all done because it sometimes it's very random in how you work. And so if you don't put anything for the start and due dates, you leave them at zero, then they will stay in the order in which you place these and display in that order when you drop the action plan in. And I have several people that are working like that. That is easier for them because of the way it works. Other projects may be much more structured. You can't do the next activity until you've completed the one before because they're very sequential. So you can do it either way um, in the system. And so it is flexible from that standpoint. Okay, so I'm gonna save this one because I just wanted you to see how to create the action plan. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over here to our customization and go back to projects and project type. And we're gonna open this one. And now we can say, well, the action plan that I want for this is that's the one that's completed. So I'll click save. And then I do believe I need to log out and log back in. I just always tell myself, if in doubt, log out. Saves time. Whoops, I do this every time. I hit the zero instead of the O. So if I go back to projects now, and I can go to the projects module, And similar to your other modules, you have a quick search up here where you can type in the name of the account or part of the name of the project to pull it up. Um, you can do searches on your fields. And then this one allows you to choose, do I see all projects, both internal and customer? Do I see only internal projects, which there are none? Do I see inactive projects. Inactive projects will be those that have been completed, okay, that are once they hit the stage that um, means it's completed. That's what they'll show. So I don't see project stage here. So I can see transition to tech support. That was my inactive, okay? So if I go to customer projects and I see all my customer projects. Now here, um, when you go to column settings, you can choose to sort by the due date, the stage, whatever. Um, this due date is in ascending order, which means it's going to go from the oldest to the newest. And you can reverse it by saying from the most recent back. So that's up to you how you want to do it, or you can sort by the stage or whatever. Um, so you know where you are with different ones. So just like the other modules, you can do the same thing. Okay. So if I wanted to um, apply the action plan to my Brambleberry, 
I have to do it manually now because I did not do it when I was in the, um, when I created the record and converted it. So I can come here to this row action button and say action plan. And then I first of all choose the action plan. It will show me all the activities, okay, and how they're set up. And then I get to choose what date I want it to start. Well, maybe I don't want this to start until next Monday. So if I choose the 23rd, then all the dates are going to calculate according to that. All right. So whatever date is your start date is how all of these will calculate as you go out. And you can see they're supposed to start on 918 because I'm starting on the 17th. If I change to the 23rd, notice it starts on the 24th. So the dates recalculate according to that number of days that you say when to start it, which is really cool to be able to do that because you can have 15 or 20 activities and you lay them all in and they're all set with the right date because you've set it up in that action plan. So if I do that, I can click save. And then when I go to my project here, and I click to expand and go to my activities tab. There are all my activities with the dates all there. So if I do my schedule the kickoff meeting, I make the phone call or I send the email to do that, then I can um, open this. And if I need to put new any notes in here, I can type notes. Hello. Oh, I have to click edit. Um, type any notes that are needed, and then I can simply click complete. Now, the way this will work in the project module, when it's completed, it crosses it off. All right. So let's say I've done two things here. I am going to do the completed, the kickoff meeting. Now, I opened that and then did a complete because I put notes in. Um, and with your kickoff meeting, you most for sure would want to put notes in. So you'd want to type your notes about the meeting and the results of the meeting and then complete it so that you can come back and refer to it. All right. Um, and then it'll cross it off. And you notice the colors changing too. So you continue to go down through and complete your um, your activities. Another way to complete it, if you don't need to put notes in, which I don't recommend, no notes, always should have notes, you can slide over here and click on the row action button and say mark complete. And it will mark it complete without opening it, but please use notes, okay? Um, so what's happening now is when I, there's a progress bar over here. And if I click refresh, you see now my progress bar says 37%. So out of all my activities, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So every time I complete an activity, I've completed one eighth of my 100%. So this is kind of cool in that if you use the action plan, this only works if you apply an action plan, as you do your activities, you will continue to see this progress bar going across and see where you stand, all right? That's pretty nice. Now let me add a new project real quickly. Let me go back, let's say to opportunities. And I could add one in here, but I like to show the process of converting it. So let's just pick another one here. So let's see, this one's ready to go. So we'll follow the steps. We're going to mark it as being one.
Now, if you also have um, business rules or workflow automation in your database, you could trigger a business rule to say when you say, set the sales stage to one, the person who's the project leader would get notified that there's a new project. Um, so I'm gonna choose industry type. This should all be filled in. We don't necessarily need this. Oh, we don't have any products and services. Well, we'll forget that for now. Okay, I should have products and services up here, but I don't. So in the interest of time, I will save this and then I will convert it to a project. And then I can do a save and close. And then I could just go directly to projects. And here's my Carolina Education Services. Now, what should have happened because I turned on that action plan to go in automatically, bingo, all my activities are there. So this project is ready to roll. All the activities are there, whoever's in charge of it, it's assigned to the person it's supposed to go to, okay? The original owner is Bill Miller and Susan is the project person and Susan now needs to go into the record and begin to work through the various stages. So as Susan completes activities, um, you would change your stages to where you are in your project until it's ready to be completed, all right? So that's the projects module. While um, you're in here, if you need to email the person, you can click here and it would open an email to send to the, the contact person. You can CC someone else, type your email, send it. It's going to save it under the activities, okay? Um, so you have that. If you do additional activities outside of the action plan, by all means, log those activities or create a new one so that you have it here and you're tracking it. Um, just like the other modules, you can attach documents and then you can set up your team here. Um, so all of it is here. It's a nice um, module to work with. Um, I will say that Linda and I, uh, Linda, the other implementation specialist, she and I use projects all the time now for our implementations and managing our implementations and it works very nicely for us. Um, so once we have a sale completed, we convert it to a project and we're ready to go. And then we have our own sets of stages that we go through and we have our own activities that we do. So um, if anyone has any questions, now is the time to ask before we end the session for today. And I'll go back to here. And once again, thank you for attending. Um, we have one more week in September and I'm in the process of deciding on courses for October. So if you have any ideas of things you would like to learn about, please email us at info at claritysoft.com and I'll be happy to incorporate those into our webinars. I'm always looking for new ideas so I don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Um, if you need help with anything, um, especially, well, first of all, if you don't see the projects module, you need to contact your account rep to find out about that. Um, if you have the projects module and you're out of your quick start program, then you can contact support at 888-838-7487, extension two, and they will be happy to help you. Or you can choose to email them at support at claritysoft.com. So if you're still in your quick start program, then you can contact Linda or myself and we certainly will answer any questions that you have because we will be helping you set it up anyway. All right, so with that, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the afternoon. Enjoy it and hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.